Hi, I'm Travis from TMK Interactive, and today I'm going to show you how to edit a theater show. If you're new here and love creative and interactive technologies just like I do, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the fun. We are going to cover a broad range of topics, starting with how to import our footage, how to compile the footage, adding music, sound effects, green screening, and as well as exporting our final video and other various touch-ups. As usual, if you are here for a certain thing, you can find chapter markers in the description below. Let's hop on over to the computer and get started. Ah, oh, what a beautiful day this is. What do you think, Travis? I don't know, my, my app says it's supposed to rain. Oh, they're just weather people. What do they know? Let's go ahead and uh, create that together. So I am going to be using DaVinci Resolve 17 for this tutorial. And DaVinci Resolve is a great free video editing software. And in my opinion, it is the best one out there. In addition, it's also cross uh, compatible with Mac, Windows, and Linux. So you really can't go wrong with using it and trying it out because of course it's free. Um, so just wanna Google uh, DaVinci Resolve 17 and click usually on the first link and it will take you to this website here and you can read up all about it. But what we're gonna to wanna to do is just download it. So you can click on the download now button and we wanna go ahead and grab the DaVinci Resolve 17 beta. Um, we do not want the studio version because that's their paid version. We're just gonna be using the free one in this tutorial. So once you go ahead and get that downloaded and installed, uh, we'll jump into it. So I've already of course installed it and I've opened it up and it asks you to create a new project and you just give it a name and hit OK and it will boot you into the screen. And a very quick overview of it is it is divided into tabs. So at the very bottom, we have sort of the different types of functions that it does. We have the media tab, which is where we're going to be importing and managing all of our media. We have the cut and edit tabs. This is where we're gonna be putting everything together. We have the fusion tab, which is where we're gonna do any of the special effects such as green screening. We have the color tab, so this is how we're going to alter the color of the images and correct any colors and things of that nature. Fairlight is for audio adjustments if you need to play around with the levels. And lastly, deliver is how we're going to export the video to deliver to our streaming service of choice or on demand or YouTube or wherever we happen to be put in our show. Uh, so the very first thing, uh, normally we work from a left to right uh, manner with these tabs. We're going to start with the media tab. We're going to import all of our media. Um, first thing I'm going to do is import my video. So I went ahead and I already recorded the clips and uh, down here in this window we're going to create what's called a bin and this is essentially a folder where we're going to keep our stuff. So I'm going to add a bin here by right clicking and selecting add bin and I'm going to call this footed, footage and I'm gonna double click to enter it. And then in the upper left-hand corner, this is sort of like the file browser on our computer system. On the left-hand side, we can sort of navigate through our computer's file structure and get to the folder that we have all of our video content. Um, so I'm gonna first drop in my video files. So for me, I have three, and I'm just gonna drag them down into this. And if this window pops up, you can hit uh, don't change. And likewise, if you're recording audio separately from your video, it's gonna show up as separate files. Um, most cameras, if you're filming on a camera, is going to include the audio in the image. But for me, I usually record my audio separately with a uh, external recorder just to get a little better sound. So I'm going to select all of these and drag them into the same bin as well. And the neat thing about DaVinci Resolve is it's going to sort of um, sync all of these audio clips together for us. So we just hit right click. We can say auto sync audio and based on waveform. And that will scan the footage and the audio and it will go ahead and sync the audio and append it to the track, which is very nice. So the next thing we wanna do is I'm gonna go back to my skit folder here. I have a couple of assets that I've already downloaded from the internet. We have a picture of like a park. We have some sound effects. We have some thunder and we have some background music as well as a bench and some rain. Um, so I'm just going to hit the uh, master folder, which is one up from our footage, and I'm just gonna click on the first one, hold down shift onto the last one, and drag this down here as well. 
So good, now we have all the footage that we need imported into DaVinci Resolve. The next step we need to do is sort of build out our scene. So we want to go ahead and now click on the Edit tab. And when we do that, it'll take us to this um, edit page. And the first thing we need is a timeline. A timeline is essentially the place where we're going to put everything in. And to do that, we're just going to right click in the upper left hand window here, go to Timelines and create new timeline. And you can give it a name if you want. I'm going to change the number of video tracks up to five. Likewise, I'm going to do the same with the number of audio tracks. This will just give us the ability to stack more on top of each other if we need to. And we're going to click on Create. So now we'll see that we have all of these video tracks and audio tracks down here, which is great. Let's start building. So I'm going to first add in the footage of the skit, which is right here. We already synced the audio, of course. Um, and for me, my camera uh, puts out sort of a flatter image profile, so I have to apply something called a LUT. And most likely you won't have to do this, but if your camera does output a image where you have to then uh, put a LUT on top, you could do that by selecting it, right clicking, go to LUT, and then by choosing your camera. And I will do that now. And that will just uh, make it look a little better and less washed out. So I'm going to drag uh, my first clip in here and just drag it anywhere down here. And we can see that we can, um, there's the video preview, sort of these little thumbnails, as well as we can see the waveform of the audio. And the waveform is gonna be very helpful when we want to match up the scenes. And then I'm just going to drag the next clip. I'm not gonna put it on the same track, I'm gonna put it one above. And now what I'm looking for to sort of match up these lines is we can see that this clip here, if I select it, it highlights it, someone's talking, 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 then there's silence, and then talking, talking, talking. So we want to go ahead and drag this so it, it flanks the other clip on either side. So now if I play it and we listen carefully, it'll sound like I'm talking to myself. Ah, uh, what a beautiful day this is. What do you think, Travis? I don't know. My, my app says it's supposed to rain. Oh, they're just weather people. What do they know? So yeah, that it's very it's even more awkward just watching me without any fancy backgrounds or sound effects. So we're gonna we're gonna fix that. Um, let's go ahead and remove the green background and replace it with this picture of a park. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna want to do is jump over to the Fusion tab, and remember this is where we're gonna do all the VFX work. And we can do that by right clicking on the clip that we want to green screen and we're going to select Open in Fusion page. And once we do that, we will get taken to another window within the app. Eventually, there we go, okay. So this is gonna look a little bit different than the Edit tab because the Edit tab uses layers, whereas the Fusion uh, tab uses nodes. And nodes might seem a little intimidating at first, but uh, trust me, they're not. If we're starting at the left-hand side here, we have media in, and then at the right side, we have media out. So essentially, we want to do something in the middle here, and we want to do a what's called a chroma key. And to do that, you can hold down Shift and Spacebar, and this will bring up a search for all the tools within Fusion. And I'm just going to say chroma, and we're going to double-click on where it says chroma key here and add. So this will go ahead and it will add a node in here. And we want to insert this in between these two other nodes. So one way to do that is while clicking and dragging this around, hold the shift on your keyboard and you'll see the line lights up. And once it does, you can release your mouse and we've now inserted a chroma key in the middle of here. But we haven't seen the background disappear quite yet and this is because we need to specify the color. So with the chroma key node selected, we're going to go up here to where it says color range, and we're going to play around with these sliders. So we have a, a green screen, so we're going to go ahead and play around with this lower uh, green toggle here, and we're just going to drag it until the subject is green screened out and um, the background is a checkerboard pattern, which means it's transparent. And in a future video, I might go over all of the green screening tools within DaVinci Resolve and all of these settings 
to really help you dial in, but for now I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, we do notice on the left-hand side here, there is an issue with um, the green screen doesn't cover the frame completely, but thankfully we can, um, what's called masking, which is selecting what we want and don't want. And to do that, I'm going to add a rectangle tool. So once again, we shift spacebar and we will do a rectangle. And we can see this rectangle here. We can grab on it, the top and stretch it up. Likewise, we can grab on one of the sides and stretch it outwards. And this is rectangle is just what we want to see because we don't want any of this over here. We are going to leave it out. So I'm going to uh, right click and drag on top of here and it will give us this menu. And we're gonna select garbage mat. And you'll notice it did the exact opposite of what we wanted to do. So that's easy to fix. We just need to select on the rectangle and click on invert. And now you'll notice that the whole background has been keyed out and it's just me. Um, I know that the other clip of me in here is the exact same. So I'm going to sort of cheat and I'm going to select all of these, right click and copy. We're gonna head back over to the edit tab and then I'm gonna select the other footage, piece of a footage here. Right click, we're going to click on open infusion page again. We're gonna select this, delete it. We're going to command V and paste that in. And we have now keyed out um, the background. So now if I go back in here, we will be able to see that I'm here, but right now I'm on top of myself. So what we wanna do is put me side by side. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm a little bit too large. So I'm going to select the top clip, hold down shift, select the second one. And up here under the transform tools, I'm gonna to click on the number and I'm gonna to drag to the left. And this is how I'm gonna scale myself down a bit. Then I'm gonna click the top one and use the position X and Y to place myself where I would like in the scene. That looks good. I'm gonna select the other clip and do the same thing. I'm gonna drag myself over here and drag myself down. And we can sort of see what it looks like. Ah, what a beautiful day this is. What do you think, Travis? I don't know, my, my app says it's supposed to rain. Oh, they're just weather people. What do they know? Okay, so that's looking good. And now I want to create a, a virtual background. And I noticed that I actually dropped these on the uh, bottom video one and video two layers. And we wanna put something underneath it. Um, the way that the editing software works is it sort of stacks your clips and layers and what's on the very top of the stack is going to be in front of everything else. So we want the background to be in the very back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the first one, hold down shift, and I'm just going to drag it up one. And that way we free up a, a layer down here. And we're going to go ahead and grab this picture of a tree. We're gonna drop it on that newly freed track and we're going to extend it all the way to the end just by hovering our mouse over, clicking, and we can then res uh, resize these clips. Um, I need to scale this up a little bit because there's a black uh, bar on either side. I just do that by clicking and using the zoom tool once again. There we go. Now I'm in a, uh, in a park with a tree, so that's looking good. Now let's move on to some of the the sound. Uh, we know that in this skit, it's nice. There's gonna be some happy music and there's gonna be birds chirping in the trees. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to click and drag our music and I'm gonna drag this to the beginning. And there we go, we have some happy music, but this is a little too loud. So there's this line on the audio track and it'll have this double arrow pointing up and down. When we hover over it, we can click and drag down to change the volume. So we're going to lower this just so it's a little under undertoning or in background. So we have some happy music, yay. And let's just add some birds chirping in these trees. We're just gonna drag this below and see what that sounds like. Yeah, there we go. So um, let's go ahead and now um, add in some more sound effects. 
Um, you'll notice that I ran out of audio tracks. I can't scroll down anymore. So the easy way to add another track is right click on this left hand side here, add track, stereo, and now we have another track and we can pretty much do that infinitely. Um, now we know that right about this point in time. I don't know. Oh, oh, they're just weather people. What do they know? So right as I finish my line, um, it's going to start uh, lightning and thundering and raining. Of, of course it is. So I'm just going to drag that right to that point in the timeline right here. So that's good. We have the sound effects there, but we want the music and the birds to stop. So where I want to cut it, I'm going to go up here and we're going to select what's called the blade tool. And this allows us to cut a track. And I'm going to, sorry, no, that's not the blade tool. This is the blade tool. And we're just going to, with the blade tool selected, we can click, click. And then I'm going to select, do the air, the select tool again. And I'm just going to delete these two tracks. So we'll have happy music oh, and then rain. Just weather people. What do they know? There we go. It's a little rough, but it works. Um, so the next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and add a bit of rain on top because why not? So I went ahead and I have this uh, clip of rain and I can drag that on top of everything else. And just weather people. What do they know? Oh yeah, that's some A plus uh, editing right there. Okay, so we're going to, um, we now that we have the sound there, we have the video keyed out, we'll, we'll notice that w when we go back to where it's sunny and happy, everything looks good. You know, in a sunny day, everything's warm color temperature, everything's bright, my face is brightly lit, and that's all good, but when it starts raining, we want to change the color temperature and the brightness of the clips to make it look like you're in a storm. So this is a this is something that will really make sure that it appears that your your performers are in the scene. And so the way we're going to do that is by using the uh, color tab within DaVinci Resolve. So everything looks good here. So right where the right where the rain starts, I'm going to use the blade tool once again and I'm just going to split everything right down the middle, including the background here. And then we're going to open this in the color tab. So I'm just going to click color tab. And we know that on a rainy day, we're going to have um, sort of a darker appearance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select me from this clip list and I'm going to lower these levels here, which is the high level, just to make myself a little darker. Likewise, I'm gonna do it on this one here. And then we can also play around with these color curves if we have time. So you can drag these dots to any one particular color if you wanted to make it say more blue or more, uh, you know, darker and just really play around with the colors to make it look like they're in the scene. Likewise, with the uh, background, I'm going to lower this brightness here. So, and I'm going to make it bluer and make it a little more saturated, less, sat less saturated. There we go. So now it, 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 you could refine this as much as you want, but for a starting point, this is a good place. Um, I'm just going to, for time's sake, we're just going to say that this looks good. And let's go ahead and go back and see what this looks like. Ah, so one thing is, is I just happened to pop in there. So let's go ahead and make this a nice fade in. I'm going to first trim all of the clips to one common starting point, And I'm just going to hold over the left side of this clip, click and drag it in. Likewise with the background, I'm going to click and drag it in. And then we want to have everything fade up nicely. And the way we're going to do that is if you hover your mouse over the left hand side, you'll see this little uh, marker here and you can click and drag that in and now everything will fade in. So this is you picking your fade up. And now when we play it.
Aw, what a beautiful day this is. What do you think, Travis? I don't know. My, my app says it's supposed to rain. Oh, they're just weather people. What do they know? The very last thing we want to do is export this um, to a file on our disk so we can share it or upload it to the internet. And that's where the Deliver tab is going to come in. We can click on that. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to drag this down just to give more space. On the left-hand side, uh, we're able to give the file a name. So this is what the end file's name will be. If we click on Browse, this will allow us to choose a location on our computer that the, end, the file will end up. And down here, we can pick uh, some of the formats. DaVinci Resolve has lots and lots of formats. But generally, for a final delivery to, say, something like YouTube, a quick time with H.264 is acceptable. And you can generally leave all the settings the same. You're going to then hit Add to Render Queue. And I will just select this as my location. And then you can click on Render All. And what this will do is it'll go through your uh, clips and it will render it out. And when this completes, you will have a file on your desk that, or on your uh, computer somewhere that you can then share your masterpiece. <laughs> There you go. We just edited together a show from scratch. Comment below on what show you are planning on editing. And if you have any questions, you can also leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.